I was wrong. Really wrong. The Stardew speedrun that I previously thought was impossible to be beaten was crushed by a whopping 2 minutes and 16 seconds, just 29 days after I released that video. And it might be able to go even lower. Now, what am I talking about? Well, a couple months ago I made a video called the Stardew speedrun that can never be beaten. You should check out that video first because it's going to give a ton of context here, but here's a quick summary. About a year ago, speedrun.com made a new category for Stardew Valley called Hat Urchin Percent, in which the objective is to try and place a hat on a sea urchin in a fish tank as fast as possible. While the most common the route was just to get the straw hat from the egg festival, one crazy guy named Sweet Chikorita made it his goal to get a living hat, which is a 1 in 100,000 chance to drop from fiber, as it would have been much faster than the current method. And after hours and hours of grinding, he finally got it to drop and shattered the previous world record by a full 2 minutes. The run was thought to be nigh unbeatable, as getting a 0.001% chance is incredibly unlikely. Well, incredibly unlikely doesn't mean impossible, and the unbeatable run has now been been crushed by a new, maybe unbeatable run? So how did this happen? If the run was previously thought to be impossible to beat, how could it have ever been beaten in just 29 days? Well, it's uh, kind of my fault. <laughs> You see, I made my mistake when I titled my video the Stardew speedrun that can never be beaten, as it directly attracted the attention of one of the two types of Stardew Valley crazies. The first type is, uh, uh, uh. Uh, these people. And the second is these psychopathic min-maxers who try to wring every single drop of value that they can out of every waking second they play this game. Like my good friend Abu, the best Stardew Valley speedrunner in the world, who took my video title as a personal attack. Is it enough that he has the record on three of the most highly contested speedrun categories of the game? Community Center, The Missing Battle Record, and Marriage Percent? Apparently not, as he spent 40 hours on stream attempting to break the hat urchin record. You see, while Chikorita's run was incredibly lucky in getting the living hat, it really wasn't optimized at all. Firstly, he would sleep all the way to day 10 to try and get his run going. He did this so that if he were to get the incredibly unlikely chance to get a living hat, that there would most likely be a sea urchin already on the farm, as it would have tons of time to spawn. The Boo, on the other hand, didn't care if it increased the odds of success. He wanted the technically perfect run, which meant that he would only sleep until day two, as that's the day Willy's opens, which would be the first day that this could possibly be pulled off. This greatly decreased the chances of there being a sea urchin spawned on your farm. Secondly, when Chikorita actually got the living hat, it turned out that he didn't have a sea urchin spawned on his farm. This meant that he had to sleep an additional nine days to wait for it to spawn. This defeated the primary appeal of the living hat method, as ideally it can all be done in a single day. So what Habu does is instead looks for the sea urchin first and foremost. If he doesn't find the urchin on day two, he resets. If he does find it, then he'll go start looking for the living hat, scything every piece of fiber he can until about 8 a.m., as that would give him just enough time to get to Willy's right at 9 when he opens. If he hasn't gotten the living hat by 8 a.m., he just immediately resets the run. In theory, this would be the perfect run and would leave no room for time saves, as the limiting factor is really Willy being open to get the fish tank in the first place. So if Habu could get to Willy's doors before 9am, there would be 100% no way to beat his run. However, as easy as it sounds, this is a nearly impossible scenario. Getting a Searchin on day 2 is hard enough, disqualifying almost every single new run that Habu would start. He'd go out, see no Searchin, and reset the vast majority of his attempts. On the runs that he would finally get a Searchin, great! Now all he has to do is roll a 1 in 100,000 chance to get a living hat. Habu reset this run for 40 hours on stream trying to perfect his run and despite all his best efforts all the hours of attempts nothing there's a reason i called it an impossible run in my original video it's because it's really hard to hit a 0.001 percent chance Habu, frustrated and exhausted after a week straight of streaming this decides to abandon beating the run that's right the player to finally crack this unbeatable run is not the best Stardew player in the world to boo. No, instead enters a new challenger to the ring, Piano Addict. Piano saw that Habu, after 40 hours and several days, had given up on the Hat Urchin Percent record, so he titled his stream Urchin Percent to Tilt Habu, where he decided to debut a completely new, never before used strategy to take the record. Piano knew that the odds of getting the perfect living hat run was just so insanely low that it was basically impossible to beat the record in that way. So Piano formulated a completely new strategy that was slower than Habu's method, yes, but still faster than Chikorita's and way more consistent. Instead of relying on the unlikely living hat, Piano instead decided to utilize a much more consistent vendor, the Hat Mouse. 
Yes! If you're unfamiliar with this little guy, he is stationed at the bottom of Cinder Sap Forest, and he's meant to sell you a new hat every time you complete an achievement in the game. Though his coolest power is launching my YouTube channel. I mean, I mean, being cute, being cute, being very cute. Like I said before, the hat mouse unlocks to selling a corresponding hat upon completing an achievement. So if you could complete an achievement and get down to the hat mouse, you would be able to consistently get a hat as opposed to relying on luck to get the living hat spawn. Well, what's the easiest achievement in the game to get? Well, if you've seen my video on the hat mouse speedrun, you'd already know that it's by far craft 15 items. Seeing as you already start with 10 recipes available to be crafted, you'd only need 5 more recipes unlocked, which can be bought at Robins in the form of path recipes. So Piano planned to complete the DIY achievement then head down to the hat mouse and buy the daisy hat but this would all cost a lot of money the daisy itself is already a thousand g on top of the fish tank that you have to buy for 500 g and you need to buy five path recipes as well which costs anywhere from 100 to 200 d adding an additional cost on top of all of this so how did Piano plan to get over 2,000 G in just a single day of playing? Well, if you've watched any Stardew Valley Min-Max video, you already know the answer. It's clay farming. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into the weeds of explaining clay farming because I explained it in like every single video on my channel. But if you're still unaware what it is, basically due to a coding oversight, clay can be hoed up in a very predictable pattern across the ground, allowing you to hoe up tons of clay in a row without using any cheats. This clay then sells for tons of money at 20G a pop. So with that, Piano's full strategy is now clear. Go out on the second day and grab a sea urchin. Then by repeatedly whacking his hoe next to his mailbox, he could hard force a piece of clay there and use that to determine the position of a piece of clay over in this section down below where there are little to no obstacles. Then he would clay farm until he ran out of energy and run to Robin's at 9 a.m. There, he would sell the clay straight to Robin and buy all of the necessary path recipes. Then he heads all the way down to Willie's and buys the fish tank, but also a trout soup. He uses the energy from the trout soup to clay farm an additional time, this time on the beach. Once he runs out of energy again, he swings the hoe a couple more times to exhaust and teleports back to his bed. Then he gets up and ships the clay and goes back to sleep. Finally, after receiving the latest set of funds, he runs all the way down to the hat mouse to finally pick up his daisy hat. And now he has all the materials needed to complete the run. Except there's one problem. Fish tanks, unlike a lot of furniture, actually cannot be placed outside. Why this is, I will never fully understand, but traditionally runs just end in willy and can place the fish tank on his floor. However, the only buildings in Cinder Sap Forest happen to be closed today, as we haven't unlocked the wizard's cabin, Marnie's is not open yet, and we lack the hearts with Leah to enter our cabin. So what are we to do? Do we just have to walk all the way back to our house and place this down? That would add a huge amount of time onto our run, and might just end us making us slower than Chikorita's run. We could exhaust ourselves, but since we just woke up, it would take a while to expunge all of our energy. Well, that's where this chest comes into play. If you didn't know, if the chest is filled with something, you can can actually move it using your hand by exactly one space. This was added in the 1.5 update to allow players to move chests without having to actually manually take everything out and place it into another chest. Well, this action actually uses energy for some reason, so if you place down a chest, put something in it, and attempt to move in a direction where it cannot move, like against a wall, you can quickly destroy your energy bar in just a matter of seconds. Now that we've passed out, we're back in our house where we can safely place down our fish tank, the urchin, and fit him with a cute little daisy. Now if that all seemed really complicated, that's because it is! And while pulling this off is certainly more consistent, it isn't a guaranteed method. If you cannot hard force the clay by your mailbox or on the beach, the run ends up being a complete wash. And honestly, there's so much to do that licking it all, Piano wasn't even sure if it would be quicker than Chikorita's run. But unlike Abu, Piano's goal wasn't to create the all-time best, most optimal run, resetting for over 100 hours. His goal was to do just what his title said, to tilt Abu, which, you know, is a much easier goal. With his run routed out, Piano started his stream and began resetting for his chance to beat the impossible speedrun. And honestly, starting off, it really wasn't looking good for him. In a similar scenario to Abu's run, which we touched on before, the run relies on getting that day two searchin, which only a handful of runs are lucky enough to get. Then on top of that, he needs to get lucky enough to be able to hard force the clay in enough tills that it doesn't completely exhaust him. And then Piano has to correctly execute the clay farming strategy as quickly as possible, which is no easy feat. While not as improbable as the 1 in 100 chance that Habu was aiming for, there's still a decent amount of luck required. Well, while Piano was attempting this, one of these times, he does get the day one sea urchin, an incredibly lucky chance. Even though he hasn't walked all around the farm, he knows that he got it because he took screenshots right as he woke up. Now he tries to hard force the clay, and after a couple tills, he realizes that it just isn't coming. 
and then it surpasses the point where he'd have enough energy to successfully complete the run. But he did get lucky enough to get the day two sea urchin, so he thinks, ah well, might as well not waste it. With his own strategy failed, Piano instead starts scything down pieces of fiber for the living hat. I mean, the chances are astronomically low, but with that day two urchin, he might as well try for that one in 100,000 chance to pick up the hat. So Piano plans to just scythe grass until nine o'clock to see if he could somehow possibly get that perfect run that Habu has been chasing for so long. Well, while he's searching, this happens. What the f- <laughs> No way, bro! Yes, after all that planning, all that routing, none of it mattered. In the end, by complete accident, Piano Addict ended up pulling off a nearly perfect run with a time of 3 minutes and 11 seconds. A full 2 minutes faster than Chikorita's run. Piano's run is basically perfect. He did it on day 2, and he got to Willy's just 40 minutes after he opened. A true and insane achievement. He had accidentally pulled off the perfect run, and forever put this record to bed. I, I said it was impossible in my last video, but I really didn't think anyone would actually do it. So congrats to Piano for creating the truly unbeatable run. I mean, technically this run could be optimized by around 30 seconds if the runner was to get the living hat before eight o'clock, allowing them to get to Willy's the second he opens. But the chances of that are so astronomically low that I doubt that this record would ever be beaten, which means that I can say in full confidence this time that this speedrun will never be beaten, and that the Hat Urchin speedrun is officially dead. I mean, unless somebody was crazy enough to do hours upon hours of resetting just to prove me wrong again! But that won't happen, right? R right? Thanks for watching the video, guys. Make sure you check out my friends Haboo and Piano Act. I'll put their YouTubes and Twitches down in the description below. Bye!